This is day 71 in the Hamas-Israel war, and I'm Yair Pinto reporting to you from Israel. Before we go into the daily update on the developments on the Hamas-Israel war and the other fronts that Israel is involved in, I would like to emphasize that the IDF is fighting an evil that keeps surprising me with the level of its brutality and inhumanity. In recent days, the IDF discovered that Hamas is booby-trapping dolls that look as babies. It is wrapping them with a baby blanket and places a little speaker that makes babies noise in an attempt to lure the Israeli soldiers to come in rescue of the infant while a bomb explodes on them. This is the enemy that we are dealing with. The fighting continues in the Gaza Strip as IDF forces are engaged in fierce battles against Hamas terrorists in the Gaza City area. The majority of the fighting is taking place between Gaza City and Jabalia. And IDF forces that include tank units are flanking the Hamas positions within these areas. Terror units of Hamas open fire using RPGs at the tanks. Hitting two tanks, the Israeli Air Force conducted an aerial strike and leveled the entire street of buildings from which Hamas terrorists conducted their offensives. According to intelligence information, Hamas's last weapons manufacturing facilities are located along the road of Salah al -Adin. After the IDF will take over these facilities, Hamas will be in a big trouble because it will not be able to resupply its terrorists with additional rockets, ammunition, explosive devices, and any other tools that it needs in order to conduct its operations and offensives against the civilian population of Israel and against the IDF. You need to understand that throughout this war, Hamas is still firing rockets towards the civilian populated areas in Israel. Here is a little update about the IDF's operations to clear out Hamas's underground terror complex in the area of Shati. In this area, Hamas has a vast underground terror infrastructure. And that's the hardest thing about this wall, because even though the IDF is controlling the surface of Hamas's hubs along the Gaza Strip, its militants are still operating underneath the ground within their terror tunnels, making it very hard to know how many terrorists still exist in a certain area. These terrorists can pop out on any location because the tunnels are covered from the ground and you have an entry point from beneath. One of the methods that according to reports the IDF is using in order to clear out and make sure that the tunnels are secure is to flood the underground terror tunnels. These reports state that the IDF continues to pump water into the underground terror tunnels in the area of Shati. Due to the success of this operation, the IDF ordered additional water pumps. Each of these water pumps can fill up a swimming pool within seven minutes. By filling the underground terror tunnels with water, the IDF is saving soldiers' lives while neutralizing Hamas terrorists underground and destroying the terror infrastructure. In the area of Khan Yunis, which is located in the southern part of the Gaza Strip, the IDF has created checkpoints in order to identify the terrorists and separate them from the civilian population. You need to understand that Hamas is operating from within the civilian populated areas in the Gaza Strip, and the IDF does not want to harm Palestinian civilians. So these checkpoints have two purposes. One is to make sure that civilians that seek to evacuate the war zones can do so while making sure that the terrorists do not disguise themselves as civilians and escape. This has happened before many times. We have seen Hamas terrorists dress up 
as Palestinian women and other people in order to evacuate the war zones to the south. Another purpose of this checkpoint is to make sure that Hamas does not smuggle additional ammunition and war supplies to the war areas. Since the beginning of this war, the IDF has significantly weakened Hamas. And one of the major advantages that the Israeli army has over Hamas's terror organization are the Israeli-made Merkava 4 tanks. Merkava 4 tanks are amongst the best tanks in the world. Hamas is focusing its offensives against these tanks because if it is able to harm one of the Israeli tanks, it's a huge victory for him. I have to tell you that even if a tank is harmed, it doesn't mean that the soldiers within are wounded. So the majority of Hamas's hits against the Israeli tanks are harming the tank itself. And Israel has become really, really fast and efficient in repairing the tanks and sending them back into the field fixed like new, while the people within are safe. The IDF has also improved its war tactics using the tanks and other units in the field. So for example, the IDF is conducting joint operations with tanks, infantry, and the Air Force together. So each unit is covering for the weaknesses of the other unit. This way the IDF is able to maneuver safely, quickly, and to protect the soldiers while neutralizing Hamas terrorists in this war. In the West Bank area of Judea and Samaria, and specifically in the Palestinian city of Jenin, the IDF has conducted operations to root out Hamas terror cells and other Palestinian extreme terror organizations. After completing its operations in Jenin, the IDF is focusing its attention to target, locate, and arrest Palestinian terror elements in other cities in the West Bank. Palestinian terrorists conducted a joint offensive against IDF positions in Hebron, Shechem, and other areas in the West Bank. After conducting the offensive, the terrorists flee and hid within populated areas in the West Bank, and the IDF is tracking them down in order to arrest the terrorists. It's very hard to battle this kind of warfare, terrorism, because the terrorists conduct operations against civilians, against soldiers, and then hide within the civilian population of their own people, making it very hard for the IDF to locate them and then to arrest them or to neutralize them without harming the population. On top of that, you can add the international pressure that is just waiting for civilians to get hurt and call on Israel to stop its operation to neutralize the terrorists that are the ones who are responsible for harming the Palestinian civilians. So I don't have any magic solution for this conflict. All I can do is pray. And as I pray, I'm praying for God to defend the idea of soldiers that are risking their lives. I pray for God to prevent the loss of civilian lives on both sides, on the Palestinian side, in the Gaza Strip, and on the Israeli side, together with any civilians that are involved in this conflict. And I pray that God will help Israel make the right decisions in this war against Hamas. Moreover, I pray for the international community to understand what we're doing here. What's our mission? To neutralize and destroy Hamas, a terror organization, here in Israel before it spreads to the rest of the world in order for us to have a better future and live here in peace. On Israel's northern front against Hezbollah in Lebanon, which is an Iranian proxy, Hezbollah continues to launch coordinated attacks against IDF positions and civilian locations. You need to understand that since the beginning of this war, Israel have relocated all the civilians that live next to the border 
with Lebanon. We have entire cities that were evacuated from their homes in fear of a Hezbollah invasion of our northern border. The IDF has mobilized troops to defend the northern border against an attack from Hezbollah, from Syria, together with Iranian proxies and other terror organizations. This is the reality here in Israel. And now to Israel's southern border in the battle against the Houthis in Yemen. The Houthis issued a statement stating that any action that is taken against them will be responded vigorously, adding that they will do whatever it takes to support the Palestinians despite American, Israeli, and Western interventions. The Houthis are conducting attacks against any ship that is traveling towards Israel, thus far harming the naval routes of merchant ships that want to travel from the east to Europe and to the west, causing them to change their routes and to suffer severe economic consequences. Let me conclude with a sad story. Yesterday, the IDF has mistaken three Israeli civilians that were taken hostage by Hamas on the 7th of October to the Gaza Strip as Hamas terrorists and opened fire at them. This happened in an area that is filled with Hamas terrorists in which the IDF was conducting fierce battles against Hamas terrorists that were hiding on rooftops and inside civilian buildings. Three Israeli hostages lost their lives. Yotam Chaim, 28 years of age. Samer Talaka, 25 years of age. And Alon Shamriz, 26 years of age. The incident happened in a street which civilians are not allowed to walk in. And we don't know how did the Israeli hostages escape their captives. And maybe Hamas terrorists did that in purpose, in order to cause Israel to shoot their own and to lower our morale. The Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, issued a statement regarding this very sad incident. Together with all of Israel, we bow our heads down in deep sorrow for the loss of these three young souls that were kidnapped by Hamas terrorists on the 7th of October. This is a war and wars are an ugly and complicated thing. And in the middle of the battlefield, you make mistakes. But the IDF is strong and united and will keep going towards its goal of defeating Hamas and releasing our hostages. We are fighting an evil that keeps surprising me every day with its viciousness, with its hatred for humanity and with its cruelty towards our people and towards his own Palestinian people. The IDF is determined and is learning the lessons of this terrible incident. And we will emerge stronger every day. And we will continue to pursue Hamas in wherever tunnel its leaders are hiding until we complete our mission, rescue our hostages and live here in Israel in peace. This war is taking time and we need your help in sharing the truth to the rest of the world. Some things that we talk about here are very hard and nobody wants to understand that this is an evil terror organization that is doing unimaginable things and has no respect for humans, for their own people and for our hostages. So please help us in sharing this truth with the rest of the world so that we will have the international support and we will continue until we complete our mission to destroy Hamas and to release our hostages. Thank you and please join us in daily prayer for Israel, for the soldiers, for the hostages and for the civilians on both sides of this conflict that God 
will intervene and reign in this region.